So what's the real concern on the, uh, on the side of the Trump administration? Their concern is that North Korea is going to develop the ability to launch a nuclear warhead that would reach continental United States. And they've said clearly to us at Crisis Group in private meetings, but also to others, that once North Korea reaches that stage, it's a, it's a red line and the U.S. would have to react. The problem is all of the means that the U.S. is now trying to use to stop that, to prevent that from happening, are not going to work. Sanctions are going to hurt, but they're not going to hurt enough to stop the North Korean regime. A military strike, a limited military strike, what the U.S. is calling a bloody nose attack, what some analysts are calling a bloody nose attack, is completely uncontrollable. The United States may consider that only a bloody nose. The current North Korean regime may consider that an all-out assault and could react in ways that would quickly uh, spiral out of control. And that's why we've come up with the notion, and we're not the only ones that have come up with it, of a freeze for freeze, which is to put more time on the clock. Put more time on the clock so that we could put, give a chance to diplomacy rather than to the drums of war. So put a freeze on what the North Koreans are developing, their missile program, their nuclear testing. And as a reciprocal gesture, not an equivalent gesture, but as a reciprocal gesture, the U.S. would put a freeze on some of its military exercises. Because in some ways, this freeze for freeze is already in effect implicitly. North Korea has agreed, because of the Olympic Games, to stop missile tests, nuclear tests. They're doing that to give this, these Olympic Games in which they're fielding a joint team with South Korea a chance. The U.S. also, for the sake of the Winter Olympics, is saying that they're not going to organize some of the joint military exercises that they conduct on the peninsula and around the peninsula. So even though this was not done with the purpose of achieving a freeze for freeze, that's the implicit reality with which we are dealing. So why not take this reality, extend it, and then try to formalize it so neither side loses face, neither side is doing something because the other side is forcing it to do it. We need to talk about North Korea's drive for nuclear weapons and its specific increase in the pace of testing of nuclear weapons and missiles in 2016 and 2017 in the context of a drive for full security. But not only that, I think most people understand the need for North Korea to have security against what is perceived to be a threat from the United States. There are also questions of domestic legitimacy for the Kim Jong-un regime. Kim Jong-un lacks a lot of the requirements of a leader of North Korea. But in the context of North Korean society, if he can complete and deploy deliverable missile-mounted nuclear weapon that can reach the continental United States, that gives him an extremely high degree of legitimacy that he currently lacks. Therefore, we can't ignore the domestic context. We need to look at both the economic and political consequences of North Korea's nuclearization drive. In 2013, the North Koreans declared a change in their political line from simply dominating through the military to including the need for economic development. This was called the Pyongyan line and it continues to be their political line going forward. In December, Kim Jong-un declared North Korea's nuclear deterrent complete. Whether this is true or not is another matter, but he declared it complete. And therefore, going into the 70th anniversary of the state in 2018, which falls on September 9th, the country is likely to look for ways to improve its economic circumstances in the short term. The country is not looking for economic growth. Dictatorships like North Korea don't need economic growth, but they do need revenue streams. And at the moment, North Korea lacks revenue streams. Crisis Group decided to focus on all the regional actors because everybody needs to understand where each of the influencing powers is coming from and there isn't enough mutual understanding. Our ultimate line is the only way forward for all the parties to this conflict, not just one, not just the US, not just Beijing, but all the parties to this conflict, is to find a mutually acceptable freeze-for-freeze freeze agreement that in the short term, pivoting off the Winter Olympics and the opportunity offered by the 70th anniversary of both North and South Korea, which falls in the summer, to move towards a more durable dialogue for the medium to long term.